Well, Tennessee Ernie was part of a of a country band that played on Saturday nights on KCOT. He was um, I forget the man's name. The head man. Of, he worked for somebody, and uh, I went to see him at El Monte Ballroom out in. And they were afraid of me because I was MCA. And uh, they said, stay away from the MCA. We, you, we'll be lost. Nobody will ever talk to us once we sign a contract. Well, we were doing Meet the, um, Peter Potter's uh, show. And so I had them invite Tennessee Ernie to be a critic on the show. So he did that. And then after the show, they took it across the street to Brown Derby to have dinner, so I made sure I sat at Ernie's table, and and I convinced him to come with MCA. So I put him on daytime television, a variety show, and then sold him to the Ford Motor Company, an evening show. He was a fabulous young man, wonderful boy, had a wonderful family. His problem was his wife was a big drinker, and. Uh, he did the show here for, I think, eight or nine years. Always embarrassed, and he moved to Santa, uh, Santa, Santa Paulo to take his wife off of the off the stage show, he say. What style of comedy would you say he had? Any kind of comedy you want, country, uh, uh, popular. Uh, one of the big shows that he did, he did a show for Lucille Ball, and he was a country hick, and he was smash hit with her. He can do any kind of comedy. Did she uh, have him back as a guest? Yeah, he came back a couple of times. No, he was a, a big, he could do every kind of comedy and sing. He had a great voice. He did many wonderful things as a singer. I took advantage of him, though. Um, we sold him to Ford Motor Company, and um, I put together a writing staff for him, and they couldn't capture his unusual style. And his shows were terrible. And uh, I would receive a call every week from J.W. Thompson about what are you going to do about the show. And two or three weeks went by, and I realized there's nothing I could do about the show because I picked the wrong writers. And they were all signed to 13-week contracts. So I felt I had to bring some of my big boys in and have them do me a favor. Danny Arnold and Roland Kibbe, both on the contract to Universal Pictures, and both were writing a picture at the time. So I told them that they had a fine spare time to sit down with each other and write the script every week for me without meeting with Ernie. And without meeting with anybody on it, they had to deliver the script to my house. I, was, I lived right near Universal Pictures. And I would bring the script in every week. Never told anybody who the writers were. Ernie's um, manager had to give me $10,000 a week. And I paid off everybody. <laughs> who, was the, who was his manager at that time? Cliffy Stone. Same one who I should have mentioned his name, Cliffy Stone's Orchestra. Featuring Ernie Ford, that's the show they did in KLAC. Cliffy Stone, and he became his manager. And I told Cliffy what I was doing, I told his attorneys what I was doing, without mentioning names. And every week I came in with a script, and the other writers wrote a script, and the producer, director would throw out the other script and use the script that I brought in. Until we finally, 13 weeks were up, we could fire the other writers, but they had a, a contract for another couple of weeks. So we didn't get any writing credit except these guys, although they weren't writing the show. But that saved Ernie's career.